Amen, amen. Welcome to our Sunday morning song, song service. Amen. We're going to worship God this wonderful morning. Amen. With this first song, amen. I'm going to sing His praises. Amen. Well, this is just a simple song to pray for my Savior all day long. Just a little bit of heart and soul. I sing of His great love for me. I praise His mighty majesty. And if you want, you can sing along. I'm gonna sing His praises. I'm gonna sing His praises. Gonna sing in the morning. Gonna sing when the sun goes down. I'm gonna give my glory shout. Celebrate and sing about. Cause He's my living God and I. Father sent, Father sent Jesus for me. He so loved the world, so He took away my sin of every And Spirit came at Pentecost, dwell with us to save the lost. Witness of His love for you and me. Amen. I'm gonna sing. Gonna sing His praises, gonna sing in the morning, gonna sing when the sun goes down. I'm gonna give Him my glory, shout, celebrate and sing about, cause He's my living God and my mission. On the chorus once again, I'm gonna sing. His praises, gonna sing in the morning, gonna sing when the sun goes down. I'm gonna give Him my glory, shout, celebrate and sing about, cause He's my living God and I'm His child. Let's sing the next song to Han Jesus. Tiada berkesudahan Kasih setiamu Tuhan Selalu ramu memaku bagiku Hari berganti hari Tetap ku lihat kasihmu Tak pernah berakhir di hidupku eh, Tuhan Yesus baik, Tuhan Yesus baik Sungguh amat baik Untuk selama-lamanya Tuhan Yesus baik Tuhan Yesus baik Sungguh amat baik Untuk selama-lamanya Tuhan Yesus baik Once again Tuhan Yesus baik Tuhan Yesus baik Sungguh amat baik Untuk selama lamanya, Tuhan Yesus baik, Tuhan Yesus baik, Tuhan Yesus baik, sungguh amat baik. Untuk selama lamanya, Tuhan Yesus baik. Amen. Let's worship Him. Yes, O oh God, You are good, O oh God. Lord, You, O oh God, are merciful, O oh God, and we thank You, O oh God. Amen. We're going to worship Him this wonderful uh, morning. Amen. With this next song. Lord, my heart cries out. Lord, my heart cries out. Glory to the King, my greatest love in life. I hand you everything. Glory. A glory. Sing. Open my eyes, let me hear your voice and you know that sweet, sweet sound. Oh, my soul rejoice, glory, glory, I hear. 
From the top of my heart, Lord, my heart cries out, glory to the King, my greatest love and life. I hand you everything, glory, glory, I hear the angels sing. Sweet, sweet sound. Oh, my soul, rejoice, glory, glory. I hear the angels sing. Angels sing. You're the Father to the fatherless. The answer. To my dreams, I see you in the righteousness. We cry glory to the King, a comfort to the lonely, the lifter of my. Here I see you veiled in majesty. We cry glory, glory. We cry glory to the King. We cry glory, we cry glory, glory. We cry glory to the King. We cry glory once again. We cry glory, glory. We cry glory to the King. Yes, let's cry out unto Him. Yes, O God, King of glory, O God. Lord, we worship you, O God. We lift you up, Lord. Lord, we honor you, O God, and magnify you, O God, this wonderful morning. Amen, amen. Amen. Uh, let's uh, go before God in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you in Jesus Christ's name. And this morning, we want to lift up our leaders in the fellowship before you. Pastor Wayman Mitchell, Pastor Joe Campbell, Pastor Alan Asir, even God, our nation before you, the King, the Prime Minister before you in prayer. And we come before you in Jesus' name, lifting up God, our one another before you, all the area churches that's represented before you in prayer. And Father God, we pray that God, you would set your hedge around our lives, Lord, to protect us, dear God. God, for those of your people,
people that are listening to this prayer this morning who are who are having a need in their life uh, they want direction they want confirmation they want protection they want uh, you to guide them through we pray by the help of the Holy Spirit Spirit, that you begin to lead them and direct them and protect them. Uh, this morning, we thank you for this morning's service. I pray by the Holy Spirit that you speak to your people uh, this morning's service. And Lord God, as we prepare our hearts this morning to listen to your word, I ask of your presence because where two or three people come together, your word says you're in the midst of us. We thank you this morning for being with us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good to uh, be with you this morning for this Sunday morning service. Hope all of you are doing well and fine. And um, I'm going to give you the church announcement. And um, tonight we do have uh, service tonight at 7.30 and ask you to uh, tune in, to turn in to your YouTube to listen to tonight's sermon. Amen. And uh, it will be at 7.30, uh, Wednesday is our midweek worship, Friday prayer and uh, Sunday morning service at 10.30. And I encourage you to uh, pray for uh, the church to open, amen, to be open uh, completely, uh, waiting for June 9 and see what's going to happen, what kind of announcement it is. The scripture says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, that the Bible says, Do not forsake the assembling of yourself together. And uh, it's God's will that uh, the church be the church. Amen. And uh, we come back together to worship our God and our Lord and Savior. Uh, that is His will. Uh, I ask that you continue to pray against this uh, uh, virus, that uh, it will be completely uh, over and also pray that uh, uh, for everyone immune system be strong and resilient as well and in Jesus name Amen so in regard to the offering and tithes encourage you to be faithful as you have been uh, continue to be faithful uh, the ten belong to the Lord is holy unto the Lord and whenever we receive uh, your salary or uh, put it aside that ten that belongs to the Lord amen so I'd like to pray before we go to the Word of God and uh, let's bow our heads father God we ask your blessing and upon every giver and every tither uh, that gives to you of their offering and tithes in the name of Jesus Christ we pray Amen. Uh, I'd like you to turn to the book of Second Chronicles, uh, chapter twelve, uh, reading from verse thirteen to verse fourteen. It says, "Thus King Rehoboam strengthened himself in Jerusalem, and reigned." Now Rehoboam was forty-one years old when he became king, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord has chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. His mother's name was Neymar and Ammonite. And he did evil because he did not prepare his heart to seek the Lord in verse 14. Father God, not by might, not by power, but by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, this uh, morning asks ask you to uh, uh, anoint this service inspire all of us God give us all a listening ear and let your word the word of God be engrafted into our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ we pray amen uh, this morning I would like to speak to you about King uh, Rehoboam the son of Solomon the grandson of David and when Solomon passed away after being king over Israel for 40 years uh, his son Rehoboam took over the kingship. He reigned over Israel, over Judah for 17 years, in which after that his son Ahijah took over the kingship. Now every king is known for something. As for his grandfather David, he is known as a man who runs after the heart of God. As for his father Solomon, he is known as a wise king. 
But for King uh, Rehoboam, he's known not for the qualities of his grandfather or his father, but rather he is known as the king who made many mistakes. From the very early beginning of his reign, when he took over to be the king, when uh, Jeroboam came to make peace with him, pledging to serve the king if the king were to treat him and his people well, unlike his father Solomon, uh, did that was very hard when seeking counsel he went seeking counsel between the elders and his friends and the elder says yes you should make peace speak well to them you know if you do so they will serve you and uh, between seeking counsel with the elders he also went and seek counsel with his friends his friends choose the hard way Okay. And his friend says to him, you know what, you should choose the rough, hard way, harder than your father did, Solomon, uh, to these people. And what happened is that he, instead of choosing the wise counsel of the elders, he went and chose the counsel of his friends who are inexperienced, who are novice. And what happened is that uh, uh, the kingdom of Israel was split into two. Okay, the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah. Okay, the kingdom of Israel was split into two, and uh, ten cities went uh, to the kingdom of Israel. And what happened is that he was left with only one kingdom, the kingdom of Judah. His second mistake was instead of being relying on God, okay, when things begin to go well, okay, things begin to go well, you still need to rely on God. He went back to relying on himself, on his own strength. It says in the Word of God in Second Chronicles chapter 12, uh, 13 as well, or was uh, 13 as well, and um, uh, was one as well. It says now it came to pass. Uh, 2 Chronicles 12 verse 1, when Rehoboam had established the kingdom and had strengthened himself that he forsook the law of the law, the law of the Lord, and all Israel along with him. Okay, he forsook. When things begin to go well, when things begin more secured, uh, uh, he felt so secure in his own strength and his own works that he told God, I don't need you anymore. Okay, and that was his second uh, big mistake. Uh, but it is the third mistake this morning that I would like to really uh, consider with you, which was when I first read it, I was surprised that it was a mistake. And that mistake is found in Second Chronicles 12, verse 14, that says, And he did evil because he did not prepare his heart to seek the Lord. I believe you too would be as surprised as I am, for um, it does not look like what God described it to be, that is, God calls it evil. Okay, in, Again, in this verse, in verse number 14, uh, the scripture says, And he did evil because he did not prepare his heart to seek the Lord. The word evil is the word immoral, the word bad, the word wicked. If I ask you to describe an evil person, you would be thinking about a murderer, a rapist, you know, a scammer, you know, people like Pol Pot, people like uh, Adolf Hitler will come to your mind, uh, which we see not in the life of uh, King Rehoboam, you know, but yet God calls him to be an evil person. Okay, you read about King Rehoboam, he's not, he's not a rapist, you know. Uh, it's not a scammer, but, uh, but yet we find here that God calls him to be an evil person, yet God places him under the evil category of people's list saying, and he did evil. So today we are going to go into this verse because this changes the way we approach God when it comes to seeking the Lord. For the call to seek the Lord is found all over the Bible. As you're listening to me, most of you or some of you, you're seeking God for direction. You're seeking God for an answer. You're seeking God for breakthrough. So when we look at this verse here, verse number 14, it kind of changes the way uh, we approach God when it comes to seeking the Lord. 
seeking the Lord is found all over the Bible. We are all uh, admonished and encouraged to do so. In First Chronicles chapter 16, 11, we are called to do it continually. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face continually. Psalms 14 verse 12, God is looking for those who seek after Him. The Lord has looked down from heaven upon the sons of men to see if there are any who understand who seek after God. Hebrews 11 6, God rewards those who seek Him without faith. It is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Isaiah 55, verse 6 and 7. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have compassion on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Jesus in Matthew 6 called us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all that we need shall be added unto us. So as much as it has to do with Rehoboam, it has to do with you and I, that is we are called, are all called, every single person, young and old, uh, to continually seek the Lord and especially in Psalms 14 verse 12, God is very clear about this, that is God is looking down from heaven upon the sun of men if uh, to see if they are any who understand and to see if any who seek after him but as we see to seek him the approach must be done with a prepared heart to seek him if not it is to God evil an example of a prepared heart is in second Chronicles chapter 19 verse number 3 from King Jehoshaphat, who told, who though to make mistakes in his kingship, like King Rehoboam, but in Second Chronicles chapter 19, verse 3, God's words testify that they were good things found in him, and one of them has to do with preparing his heart to seek after God. Nevertheless, there are good things found in you. In that you have taken away the groves, the groves is idols, out of the land. And the next thing God says, and has prepared thine heart to seek God. For Samuel chapter 7, verse 3, Then Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel, saying, If you return to the Lord with all your heart, then put away the foreign gods and the asterites from among you, and prepare your hearts for the Lord and serve him only and he will deliver you from the hand of the Philistine. Now I asked the question myself and I even asked this question to another pastor. Why when one did not prepare their heart to seek God, God uh, called this in action an evil thing? The answer that I got is because God always turns to the heart. Is God always looks to the heart in all things before He can bless uh, something or someone, before He can start something or prove something or be with that person, God always looks at the heart. If you recall the story of Samuel being called to un be uh, called to anoint the next king of Israel in 1 Samuel 16, when Samuel saw Eliab, verse number six, he says, "Surely the Lord's anointed is before him." When Samuel saw Eliab, he saw him to be physically uh, strong. He saw his appearance to be good. And he says, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But as quick as he says that, verse 7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Colossians 3, 23-24 Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart 
as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving, and it is the heart that God looks to when a seeker is seeking God for help, for direction, for answer prayers. Which shall bring us to the question, of what does it mean this morning, uh, then by a prepared heart to seek God? We now know uh, God looks for a prepared heart when we are to go before Him. But what is a prepared heart? Uh, Jonathan Edward uh, a preacher says, Resolution 1, I will live for God. Resolution 2, if no one else does, I still will. By that it means no matter the circumstances, whether I am famous or forgotten, whether I am prosperous or penniless, whether I am accepted or abandoned, I will seek Him. Uh, no matter my circumstances, by that it means or situation, no matter my longing or desires, no matter the opinions of the crowds of the culture, I will seek God. It's about making a decision from the start, from the very beginning, to silence any kind of voice that may cause us to divert somewhere else instead of seeking God. This is from uh, Jonathan Edward interpretation of what it means to uh, a, a be a, to have a heart that's prepared. Now, I'm going to add a few thoughts to what it means by to prepare our heart is by the way of regularly going before God as David did in Psalms 51 verse 10 and asking God to create in us. Okay? And that is what David asked in Psalms 51 verse 10. Create in me, okay. The word create is the word bara, which is the word shape, form, or fashion, in which I'm going to look at four kinds of asking, creating, asking God to create, four kinds of heart that uh, God looks for from us that qualify one who is seeking God as a prepared heart. So I want to look at four kinds of heart that we need to pray and ask God to create in us. And the first kind is called uh, create in us a clean heart. That is to ask God to create in us a clean heart. That is what Psalms 51 verse 10, uh, David Pray to God for create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Within me, this asking shall result in one regularly causing or regularly confessing our sins to God, as David did in Psalms 51, and also it would open up ourselves to the voice of the Holy Spirit. When we pray, God create in me, bara in me, fashion, shape, form in me a clean heart, what we are doing is that we are opening up ourselves to the voice of the Holy Spirit to convict us of any sins that we might not have knowledge about. But the Holy Spirit who knows all things, sin is a hindrance. Okay, uh, uh, if there's sin in our life, God will not hear us. Okay, when we first repented and received forgiveness by the blood of Jesus, God the Father caused us to become born again. At that time, we were forgiven and received His initial cleansing of all our past sins. Sin is very deceitful, which deceitful means can deceive you into thinking you are right when you're uh, not right. Okay, and what happened is that at the beginning we got saved, we got forgiven, and we are born again. But as we go on daily, there's a daily need in our life to ask God to begin to uh, check on our heart and ask God to begin to forgive us of our sin. And by asking God to create in us a clean heart, we become sensitive. 
through the guiding voice of of the Holy Spirit, we become uh, matured. We, we become to learn how to avoid sin. The clean heart is determined to do any needed repentance and adjustment to maintain our relationship with the Father. Okay, Psalm 73, verse 1. Truly God is, a, is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. Truly God is good to Israel and even to such as are of a clean heart. So the first thing is to ask God to create in us a clean heart like David did. The second thing to ask God to create in us is to create in us a tender heart which by doing so shall prevent the heart from becoming hardened. Or stubborn. You and I do not want our hearts to be stubborn. You and I do not want our hearts to become hardened. When it's hardened, and when what happened is that God cannot speak to the heart, then God cannot minister to the heart. A tender heart is a heart that is soft and is quick to treasure God's all important word, whether it's by inspiration or whether it's by warning or whether it's by rebuke or whether it's by instruction like a sponge, it becomes very absorbing to God's word of instruction or warning. King Josiah is an example of one whose heart was tender. And as a result of God the Father heard the desire of this man's heart in 2 Kings 22 was number 18 to 19 because your heart was tender and you have humbled yourself before the Lord. When you heard what I spoke, I also have heard you. Okay, A tender heart opens up the years of your Father in heaven. And because you have a tender heart, when you heard what I spoke, you absorbed what I spoke to you. To the man of God, to the Holy Spirit, okay, I also have heard you as well. So the second create in me is to ask God to create in us a tender heart. The third kind of heart we should ask God to create in us is a heart that is willing and a heart that is obedient. By praying this, it will change burdens to delight. Okay, That is, you will delight instead of becoming burdened to do what God asks you to do. You will find it a delight. Okay, you will not find it, uh, you know, uh, a burden to do what God wants you. You do not find it a, a heavy thing, you know, to do what God asks you to do. In Romans chapter 7, 22, the Apostle Paul tells us, he says, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. I delight in God's word. Know God's word. Know God's demand. No God's task, no God's instruction, no God's command is too much of an asking. For I shall delight to do whatever is given me to do, whenever whatever is told of me to do. I find it a privilege to do. I do not find it, you know, a burden to do. In Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 to verse 3, the scripture says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seats of the scornful. But verse 2, But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in this law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in this season, whose leaves also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. If you look at verse number 2, it says to the person who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, who does not stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seats of scornful, and that man is blessed. Verse number 2 continues to say, but his delight. He finds delight. Delight in the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord, the word of God, God's instruction is not heavy for him. 
okay God's instruction is not difficult for him he finds it a joy a privilege to do okay whatever God tells him to do and the reason is because there's a there's a prayer of prayer made to create in the person a a heart that is willing a heart that is obedient this morning the fourth and last kind of heart that we need to ask God to create in us is a heart that is contrite and humble okay, contrite means broken contrite means sorrowful for any mistakes for any wrong for any disobedience a heart that is that is can be broken the prophet Isaiah in uh, chapter 57 verse 14 to 15 has this to say about the high and mighty God who is eternal. Thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy places. And listen to what he says uh, the next few verse words onwards with him also that is of a contrite or sorrowful uh, heart sorrow for one disobedient and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble to revive the heart of the contrite one God dwells in the high places God is holy God but the next thing is God also dwells with the heart of those who are contrive and humble such asking what happened of a clear of a heart that's contrived and humble prepares one heart to be in the presence of god for isaiah say he dwells not just in the high and holy places but also among those who are contrived and humble and the outcome is the person's life is revived okay again the word contrive is the meaning of sorrow for one uh, wrong or disobedient Luke 18 10 to 14 yeah, we have uh, the account of Jesus speaking about two men who went up to the temple to pray one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector and Jesus says in verse 11, The Pharisee stood and prayed just with himself. God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector, the second man standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven but beat his breast saying God be merciful to me a sinner this man's heart is a contriting heart I tell you this man went down to his house justify rather than the other for everyone who exhort himself will be humble and he who humbles himself will be exhorted so as I close okay when you seek God when you go before God when you seek you want to seek his favor seek his face seek direction seek for healing seek for breakthroughs and seek for for miracle to take place first get your heart prepared prepare your heart prepare your heart by asking your father in heaven to create in you a clean heart to create in you a tender heart to create in you a willing and obedient heart and to create in you a heart that is contrived and a heart that is humble for God look not at the outward appearance but God looks at the heart Amen I want every head bow, every eyes close. Amen. I want every head bow, every eyes close before the presence of the Lord. And let's lift up our hands and begin to thank the Lord for this morning message, for His word this morning. And Father, we thank you for your word of instruction.
this morning from the book of Second Chronicles, out from the life of King Rehoboam. We heard you loud and clear. Okay, you want a prepared heart to come before you when we seek you, whatever we are seeking you for. And I pray this morning for all of us that what have been taught this morning, what have been preached this morning, shall go with us always, every day of our life, and whenever we go before you to seek you, we will make this our prayer request. You will make this our prayer goal, always and regularly, praying that you will create in us a clean heart, that you would give us a create in us a tender heart, that you would create in us a willing and obedient heart, and also a heart that's contrived and humble. Lord, we want to please you. We want to walk before you in holiness and righteousness. And we thank you this morning. And I want to bring everyone that's not well, physically, mentally, maybe spiritually. And I want to pray for them by faith this morning, laying my hands, stretching out to them by faith and praying for their well-being, praying for those who need a breakthrough, that they will receive a breakthrough, praying for those who need healing in their bodies to receive healing, praying for those who need a miracle and direction in their jobs, in their business, in their life, Lord. Praying for all of us, God, that you will cover us and protect us as we lay hold upon Psalms 91 that says, for those who love you and those who make known your name and for those who make your dwelling their habitation, Lord, you shall charge your angels upon them and protect them lest they dash their feet upon the stone. Thank you, you are refuge and thank you, you are fortress, our shield and our buckler in Jesus Christ's name. And all God's people say, Amen.